popular YouTubers, more now than ever, have tried to branch out into film and TV. Last year, I made a video on a movie starring the internet's best boy, Logan Paul. A man so generous, he offered everyone free face masks in a time of great need. Corona COVID-19 protection mask. This is my way of like doing something good in the universe. They're free. Only for him to hide the shipping charge at the checkout page. Then I talked about Liza Koshi's show, something that was so game-changing in modern media. YouTube gave it two seasons. I destroyed her career so much with my video. She's now reduced to having tea with <laughs> Michelle Obama. And as young creators, as young leaders, you guys are gonna be the change agents. I'm gonna be sitting in my wheelchair. <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> now, we're moving on to Lele Puns. Oh, Lele Puns. If you don't know who Lele is, she is a woman on the internet. She's one of YouTube's heavy hitters and pretty much the female face of the platform, with her hilarious skit videos always making it to the front page. Only a few generations. Sounds like someone breaking in! It's just a storm, dick. <laughs> She's been featured in YouTube Rewind, a cherry picking of the most safe and advertisable creators, yeah. while also having a successful Instagram page where she edits her pictures to a horrendous degree, probably giving her younger fans body dysmorphia. My demographic is like from nine to 24. And now has been gifted her own YouTube original series where we look at the secret life of Lele Pons. How brave. But I'm not going to be talking about that today. Honestly, it, it's way too personal and she cries a lot, which is very sad. But I am going to be talking about a film that she starred in. <laughs> we Love You is a YouTube originals that stars Lele Pons. <laughs> and co-starring the man that knows Drake's dad. My stars aligned. I never thought I'd be at the place literally where Drake is right now. Where your dad is, who I know personally. And... An actual actor. Well, I mean, he's known more for doing stunts on his IMDb page, but he's practically Brian Cranston compared to these two. Say my name. No. I just want to say I took the sacrifice of buying this film in HD so you can suffer with me in full 1080p quality. The film is apparently produced by... <laughs> Awesomeness Films, a network that also helped produce the Smosh movie. Yay. Uh, Anthony from Smosh. Uh. By the way, quick editor's note, when this video was finished and uploaded, Awesomeness loved it so much, they blocked it worldwide so no one could view it. Thankfully that thing, fair use, exists. Yeah, sorry mega corporation. Maybe another day. Apparently it's a network that targets teenagers and preteens. Watch out PewDiePie. <laughs> I love this meme. And I'm definitely going to kill it in the next meme review. With one exec referring to it as a maverick. Something the young people were getting involved with. Oh my god. It's all connected. The intro sequence is probably the most uninteresting, flaccid presentation I've seen. The entire thing is just the main character Noah, played by Mr. Stuntman. Champ Chong here. Going through his emails. And there's so much text to read through here, you might as well have had a text scroll at the beginning. The year is 2020. A period of civil war. Lives have been lost. Galaxies destroyed. And I still can't make a good base design in Terraria. I just want to say, I'm not against having a desktop recording being used as an intro. Unfriended, a very mediocre horror film, takes place entirely on a laptop screen. But there, they used actual recognizable brands, creating this loose sense of realism and immersion. But in this film, you just have Meet Your Love, which... Just sounds like it installs Trojan wear on your PC. And uh, a fan app. <laughs> the hell does that even do? Also, for some reason, when Noah gets an incoming email, they use the exact same sound effect as Doom 64. <laughs> After that bland intro, we see our heroes, Noah and Ford, playing badminton. They're interrupted by Logan Paul's oldest fan ever, and this scene perfectly demonstrates how close their bond is. Yeah. I'll bet you two learned a lot about gentlemanly cooperation in your bed where you have sex. No one likes a homophobe, Glenn. And no one likes you two assholes. Do you, you kiss your mother with that filthy mouth? You kiss your boyfriend with those ugly lips? As a matter of fact, in your freaking face. Love always wins and another Logan Paul fan bites the dust. The next scene, we get Noah narrating over the fact that they're both going on a double date. To be clear, no, he doesn't really kiss me with those ugly lips because we're into girls. Specifically, these two extremely attractive girls. I love how he has to explicitly tell the audience he's not gay because Fousey kissed him on the cheek. From personal experience, 
kissing a man is probably the most heterosexual thing you can do. Initially, I didn't really care about Noah's narration, but it really gets in the way of the flow of the film. It's like I kind of fantasize about like cuddling you, you know? Ooh, that sounded way better in my head. Maybe they didn't hear me. I don't know why he saved my life. Maybe in those last moments he loved life more than he ever had before. Why even have the pauses? The entire point of film is being able to understand a situation by characters expressions and the way scenes are shot. Not pause every five seconds explaining what just happened. That's, that's cringe. Okay. We discover that Noah and Ford- am I, do, do I call him Ford or do I call him Fousey? I'm just gonna call him Fousey, forget it. <laughs> Noah and Fousey both work for the same company, a marketing agency called Buzz Group. Yeah, I, I wonder where they got that name from. Gives me connections. The film was made in 2016, by the way. It, I, that doesn't have much relevance, but you know. Noah works there as an artist, making designs for brands on the company's behalf. It's a great painting. I mean, for a fisting bro spray. Last week I was painting a top hat on a condom and now this. Maybe I ought to just like, you know, quit my job, be like a real artist. I don't know, do you like food and shelter? Is this movie calling out self-employed Twitter artists? Wait, that's illegal! I'm sure it's unintentional, but as soon as Noah says that, he looks directly at the camera for half a second, like it's a fourth wall break or something. And you're probably wondering what Fousey's job is? It it's never explained. I read all the item descriptions and browsed the wiki. There's nothing. The bosses of the company come over to look at Noah's progress, and one of them has an accent I can only describe as Rick Tuffin, but less shouty. Fascinating. Scathing satire of the homoerotic world of full masculinity and fraternal life. Your screams are so erotic. Yeah. I love how one of the guys just totally breaks character, but they keep it in the take anyway. Hold on a minute. Did they get Ray William Johnson in this movie? A man who started out his career doing funny Reddit reaction videos and is now so revered, he's used for ironic Twitter memes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Girls sh Another thing as well, I'm convinced Ray's character is actually omnipotent. Look how he doesn't bro fist his fellow employees. He knew. <laughs> Social distancing was coming. We transition over to a bar after work where no one narrates how he's in a bar after work. Every day after work, we like to meet up for happy hour. The happiest thing about this place is that girl. Ford likes to call her NGH for never gonna happen because, well, after a year, I have yet to figure out how to make a move. Thank you, movie. I never would have known he had an interest with that woman with all the repetitive shots of them looking at each other. Mm, me watch movie. Me need to be told every plot point when I play Fortnite. Let's go! Anyway, in this film, Ray William Johnson is gay and talks about how his relationship works differently because of that. So Carlos and I love each other, but we're dudes. And we do what dudes do. So and technically, you guys can have a threesome whenever you want. Like, you can literally see a guy at a bar and say, that guy, and go home and bang. And we do. Mm. That's it. I want to be gay. <laughs> not how it works, Fuzzy. Someone, someone on set tell him that's not how it works. Uh, I don't think that's how it works. I feel like these are all paid actors, but no one actually told Fuzzy about the cameras. So he's just being himself. I want to be gay. It's so progressive. It works for him. Perfect. Damn. I don't have a toothbrush. Damn, well, you want to share? <laughs> no, I'm cool. I know. Here, maybe no. just one. Maybe no, just no, one. no. What? No. What? Screw you now. I don't want to be your friend no more. <laughs> I shouldn't be complimenting this film, but casting Fousey as someone so moronic to think he can just turn gay at will to have more relationships, it's just so perfect of his character. I'm not good at this stuff, guys. While most of his group were open to casual relationships, Noah wants a committed relationship, which, of course, he gets clowned on for. I'm just not like a hit on a girl at a bar kind of guy, you well, know? No, it's because you're a like, get in a relationship and then get broken up with and then cry about it to your friends kind of guy. That is yeah. so harsh. Guys, I think Noah is a simp. His colleagues set up a prom night for the company and hope that Noah will end up finding someone. Seems a bit of a stretch for one person setting up a whole party, but to be fair, this is 2016. Discord hadn't really taken off yet. Texting a hot guy? No, I'm actually making an app. It's like you take a picture of your face and then you scroll this bar 
farther and farther and you get older and older until you're dead. They should have had that filter that puts a smile on everything instead. <laughs> we then get a compilation of Noah and Fousey hitting on people. Noah being awkward and, dare I say, cringe. <laughs> Hello, miss. I am wearing a sexual fragrance, and I you should, yeah. And Fousey, well, <laughs> being Fousey. What is that great smell? Oh, it's me. Here, smell, smell. Oh, you look like a girl that wants to smell me. Come here, girl. Oh. You've also got this really awkward conversation where Noah's boss basically alludes to him being an incel. Oh, no. Noah here is a serial monogamist. He's only had sex with himself. I, or a girl in his dream. I, I swear to God, <laughs> I've had sex. Look, it's okay. I know what it is to be celibate. I, that's the thing, though. I'm not celibate. This, of course, causes Noah to go into full beast mode. <laughs> but then... Something terrible happens. Lele Pons enters the film. <laughs> I'm surprised it took this long. Like, she's the main focus of all the promotional material. They introduce her as being a, a, a little bit of a psycho, taking pictures of Noah looking sad and basically mocking him. Do you mind if I take a picture of you uh, with this? Okay. Take your glasses off. You're handsome. You embrace it. Sadder. <laughs> Thankfully, Noah's into being humiliated so much, he tries to spark up a conversation with her. Hey, uh, I'm Noah. I'm Callie. Callie. Could I get your email or something? No. Imagine if they just like exchanged friend switch codes instead. Yeah, so just put this put this 300 character code in and on weekends you can visit my island. They end up going to a secret party that has so few people. 90% of the shots are super close-ups to make it look like it's packed. I like you. Why? You keep it low key. Captain Keys. Noah and Lele hit it off. And now, escaping the realm of incel, Noah suddenly becomes a prodigy at his workplace. So, I want everyone to put your heads together and just come up with something outside the box. I really think we can blow Converse away. Uh, how, how about a citywide scavenger hunt with clues that lead people all over the city? It'd be like a goal at the end, or like a treasure. Like a one-of-a-kind pair of golden Converse. I could do the art, Ford talked to manufacturing, Jess builds the app, Derek shoots the spot, and Matthias writes the copy. Noah, I am blown away. Hate to uh, steal your thunder, Noah, but the uh, scavenger hunt idea, Logan Paul already did that. What's up, guys? So for those of you who are at VidCon and looking for the $3,000 that I hid, here is your first hint. The YouTube play button is right there. We are in the middle of the convention center, which is right there, and it is on this side. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Look, I hear Hunter around. Afterwards, Fuzi congratulates Noah and says that they should both go on another double date. I kind of met a girl. I'm like a real oh. good looking lady. D does she know you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, she knows me. We, we kissed. What? That's awesome. We can go on a double date now. Yeah, uh, you, wait, hold on. You're seeing someone too? I don't want to jinx it, but tomorrow afternoon I have a date and I'm completely into her. Yes, I love it. Dude, that's awesome. Okay, see, man, shit's really turned around for us. Wow, I I really wonder what's gonna happen next. Dates that I really appreciate this, so thank you. You're welcome. I normally invite you over, you know, pour some wine, okay. make some popcorn, okay. you know. Oh my god, Fuzzy Tube is dating the same girl. What a twist. <laughs> I like how they try to foreshadow it subtly by only showing Fuzi with his girlfriend. But then they do these long takes where you can clearly tell it's Lele before the big reveal. Noah and Fuzi start to realize something's up when their girlfriends have the exact same interests. So, I heard you telling Derek this girl of yours likes whiskey? Mine too. Uh, what else about yours? Ah, uh, well, she is pretty badass. Oh, trust me, mine is the definition of badass. Yeah. And she knows how to make me laugh. She's so funny. Oh, mine too. But get this, mine rides horses. Okay, mine, mine rides horses. Are you guys sure you're talking about Lele Pons here? I don't care! When Noah finds out Lele's been two-timing him, he goes into a deep depression. Ah! 
growing his hair out, only wearing leather jackets, and forgetting his name. My name is not important. Alright, it, it's a bit. That didn't happen. But they both decide to break up with her, with Noah going ahead first. What? My friend bailed on me. We were supposed to go mushroom hunting and now she can't make Excuse it. Excuse me, what? Mushroom hunting? I mean, we go hunting for mushrooms, and we eat them. Ah, oh, you're amazing. No. Mm -hmm. Would you want to go with me? I, I, I do love mushrooms. It's pretty cool. Oh, I mean, I can... There's a... I please, yes, I would love to. All right. Firstly, simp. But secondly, how does mushroom hunting even work? It's not like a mushroom can move or anything, so wouldn't it be mushroom gathering? I like how I'm focusing more on this in the film because I just... I, I, there's, I could, I don't want it. Oh. Fousey tries to break it off and of course he blunders. Oh my. I'm screwed. Okay, so what happened? You didn't break it off. I didn't break it off. And they both end up acting like 12 year olds when they donate to a female Twitch streamer. I know, she, it's impossible. She's sexy and loves mushroom hunting. Uh, it's like someone invented the perfect girl just to torture us. But then, Fuji comes up with the genius idea they both share Lele part-time. What if we don't stop dating her? I'm sorry, I'm not following. We share her. I think that is literally, and I, and I mean this without exaggeration, uh, the worst idea I've ever heard. Damn it. Venezuela. Yeah, I heard you the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like they want a polyamorous relationship. They're literally both just too simp to give up Lele themselves. They both agree to break it off if Lele breaks up with one of them first. And then they meet her to tell her about the game plan. Hey! Hey. <laughs> hey. Noah? Yeah. The problem with this scene, Lele is center focus for once and she has to act, uh... Not like Lele, but the thing is, Lele can't act subtly. In her own YouTube content and sketches, she's loud and obnoxious, but when asked to act more reserved... We're actually best friends. That's weird. It comes off as really stilted and awkward. Yeah. We all have fun, mm -hmm. so why should that have to stop? All together, we become like this perfect boyfriend. Like a boyfriend Voltron. Never mind. Cal, no. I do you know that I like you both a lot. And at this point, I would hate to choose between you both. Then don't choose. You don't have to. Yeah, but this three-way thing is kind of crazy. You're right. It's crazy. It's, we should, we no, can't. no. But that's why I love it. This might not even be her fault. Like, I have no experience. I can't act to save my life. And trust me, I've tried. Well, maybe you should open your mouth and start talking. The aliens are coming. But giving Lele a role that isn't funny shout shout, it just doesn't seem to work. Going off track a bit, let's pretend Lele is something she wants us to believe, an actual actress. You know, actors are versatile, but only a few can actually fill in many different roles. Line, go, go, go fetch her and tell her what? Go fetch her and tell her I'll give her a fat five dollar gold right, piece. Right, right, go fetch her and tell her I'll give her a fat, fat five, fat five dollar gold piece. A really good example I like to fall back on is Adam Sandler. I personally don't like the majority of his work. Funny man fall over, funny poor taste joke that makes bottom denominator laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but in his latest film, Uncut Gems, he totally transcends his usual archetype into someone barely recognizable. I disagree. I disagree. An actual serious character with flaws that aren't just played up for laughs. Going from a Funny man <laughs> to this caricature of a New York jeweler. If you didn't tell me that this was Adam Sandler, I never would have guessed. Oh, Arlo, you won't believe it, Arlo. I was in Hotel Transylvania in Pixels, Arlo. Fuck. But now, but now I got an award for the best male lead, Arlo. They said I might make it a Family Guy cutaway gag, Arlo. I made it. This is how I win. You see why uh, I did that little off-topic retrospective? Because I, I just want to talk about anything except this movie. Back in the film, Lele is interested in the idea of a three-way relationship. You're right. It's crazy. It's, we should, we... No, no. But that's why I love it. When? Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's different from any other relationship I've ever been in, and they've all been super bad, so it can't be that bad, right? I like how she talks about her previous relationships being bad, like it wasn't her doing. But this entire love triangle has stemmed from her two-timing two guys at once. 
The boys return to their game at badminton. Noah is getting second thoughts about the relationship. But your boy, Fuzi, making me question if he's even a character, offers some advice to Noah. All right, look. Here. What's this? My lucky flask. Well, one of my lucky flasks. Just put some bourbon in it, and no matter where you are or what you're doing, if you have that, you'll be okay. These sound like famous last words. Oh, well, Noah. How else do you think Fuzi managed to pull off so many pranks in his life? Watch this. It's going to disappear in three, two... My God, how do you do it? Noah and Lele go on a second date together. They hit it off and make sweet, sweet love on a boat, all while skinny John Cena watches in total apathy. Another day, Fuzi and Lele also have their own separate date, where Fuzi poses for one of his YouTube thumbnails. <laughs> the thing is, Fuzi and Lele are actually a pretty good combination. With Noah, he's played by an actual actor that knows how to act. Meanwhile, Fuzi massively overacts while Lele underacts, and it has this really awkward chemistry. Don't start cuddling. <laughs> Put on some Netflix. And we love you. Yeah, uh, yeah that's that's what I, I mean. We, we, we love you. I love you guys, too. We should recreate that famous John Lennon and Yoko Ono picture that Annie Leibovitz took. It's like my favorite picture of all time. Well... You know what? I don't like that one that much. They can't even kiss properly. Lele just goes straight for his nose. The main problem Noah and Fuzi have now is that they think they'll lose their job because of their boss having high religious values. So, dude, as soon as Ed finds out, he's gonna freak. He's gonna fire us. He's not gonna fire us. We've been killing it for him. Yes, he will, dude. He's so Christian. He still watches Veggie Tales movies. He doesn't have kids. Someone tell me, please. Why is religion always the bad guy in every media ever? Honestly, I was following this film, but criticizing Veggie Tales into the trash. This film goes. Not even I'm on white with your positive review. I think I'm gonna play some postal too. At least that game man, understands good comedy. Hmm. Oh man. Hmm. Uh. Noah and Fuzi debate on who's gonna woo my lady first. When Lele asks them both who wants to meet up with her first. I'll hang out. You you gotta go to the gym, right? Not after this little talk. Okay, you know what? Let's flip a coin for it. No way. Then what do you suggest? <laughs> well, tonight's gonna be our first double date. They go to an arcade and start playing Safari Hunt. Ah, yes. My favorite game. I have many fond memories of it. His life is full of hardships. hardships. On their two and a half date, Noah confesses his love for Lele, which gets Fuzi to enter the simp realm. You're magical. God, I, I love you. What? This is like math or algebra. What? I, I said I love you. You can't keep getting away with it. I love you too. I, I mean, I mean, we love you. <laughs> Fuzi and Lele leave without Noah, implying that Fuzi will be the first to lay mad pipe. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Noah returns back to the office and his work colleagues check up on how their relationship is doing. So, how's your collective girl doing? <laughs> <laughs> I still can't believe that Ford told you guys about that. I trust them. Noah, your secret is safe with us. Okay, I've much darker and dirtier secrets I've never, never revealed. They convince him that he has to man up and be more outgoing to have a chance to compete with Fuzi. Noah, I love you, but you're too sweet for your own good. You need to add some danger to the dynamic. Women love danger. So do I, I wouldn't know how to do that. I'm not telling you to stab anyone. I'm telling you to invite her over okay. and put on a sexy Liam Neeson thriller. I mean, to be fair, like Noah should totally listen to Ray. He's done more than enough rom-com sketches to know how to hit on literally anyone. Are you sandpaper? Cause I want you to rub my wood. If I told you you had a beautiful body, could I put my penis there? What the fuck? Noah finally gets a separate date with Lele, and it's much more reserved than Fuzi's. Just, you know, some Netflix and chill. Hey, I got something for you. Hey. Okay, it's uh, a little something. Uh... What is it? Okay. Oh my God, Noah. 
Did you make this for me? Yeah, it's my first memory of seeing you at that prom thing. Oh yeah, you, you forgot to draw her holding the camera and then laughing at you while you look sad and depressed. Yeah, no, Noah has a very selective memory. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you like it. They both hype each other up by sleeping with Lele, but honestly, they both just sound like kids that got their name read on a stream. Mr. Mr. Beast. Beast. Oh, yes, Arch. they were doing yes, yes. In a, probably FouseyTube's favorite part in the movie, the cast strip off for a photo shoot for Lele's project. And after that, they get together to have a... What's going on? Callie had an idea. A threesome. And again, no one except Fousey really seems to be enjoying it. <gasps> the day after they lament on how they think they enjoyed it. I kind of feel weird about last night. Yeah, it, it was a little intense. But still compete to win her affection anyway. Today, we don't play good mitten. We play to win. We play bad mitten. And the winner gets to take Callie to our dinner. You're on, Rico Suave. I think that random kid is actually my favorite character in the entire film. I especially like this cameo in Breaking Bad. <laughs> Fuzi wins the badminton game, totally off screen. That's the game. I, I assume he lost the game, but then cried to the director. I mean, that wouldn't be the first time. I have a message for Fuzi. I know what you're going through. I'm sorry. You're trying to be relevant again. You're trying to be Drake. Oh no, you look Drake in the eyes. Like this? How did you look? Noah's female friend calls him over and explains to him that he's being a giant simp. You don't look very happy standing up here pretending not to be her boyfriend. I want her to like me the way she likes Ford. Okay, great. Go down there, go get her, win her back. I don't know what you want me to say anymore, Noah. They're always doing something dumb and fun together and I don't know how to compete with that. Okay, be dumber and funner. Yeah, that, that's probably, that's actually what I should do. No, I was being sarcastic. No, I mean, <laughs> That's the only move I have left. The me thing? That's not working. He manages to misinterpret her entire message and thinks that he has to out Fousey Fousey Tube. Which, uh, may I add, is theoretically impossible. We all know what happened to the last man that tried to do that. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? Noah takes Lele on a surprise trip, which looks like the opening of Resident Evil 7. Seven minutes is all I can spare to play with you. He tries to get it on with her near the lake, only to be stopped by a woman who snitches on them. It's not, it's not, no, she's, no, 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 she's, she's hey, my, my, you stay away from me, okay, I have mace. God, she's like every killjoy in Gmod. Citizens aren't supposed to have guns. Admins aren't supposed to suck dicks. You're gonna suck this cup! Clean! Yeah! He gets arrested, and finally now, three quarters of the way into the film, starts to question the entire relationship. No, are you still okay with us all dating? Yeah. I'm super cool. Doesn't seem like it. I'm cool. Yeah, guys, if you couldn't tell Noah's not happy with the relationship by, you know, stuttering and his facial expressions alone, let, let's add in some sad guitar riff on top. You know what, guys? Let's bring back the pause narration at the start of the film as well. No, are you still okay with us all dating? Yeah. I'm super cool. I was not happy with the relationship. Noah pretty much gives up on trying to share equal time with Lele, and at his boss's marriage party, starts to hang out with his girlfriend instead. Not like actual girlfriend, you know, like a friend that's a femoid. You, you get it, you get it. And apparently getting completely leathered off two small glasses of champagne. You're the man, Ed! Oh, man, Ed's gonna have sex tonight! <laughs> How can no one do being drunk right? No one! This happened in the Far Cry video, and it's happening now. He goes up to make a speech to try and humiliate Fuzi and Lele, only for him to generate one stock shocked woman sound effect and get pushed to the floor. Come on. Now, not everyone knows this, but the three of us are actually dating each other. And sexually. I love you, Ford. I love you, Callie. We can make this work. Jesus, no! <laughs> they both get fired. Fuzi goes back to making pranks. Push my bag down a little. <sighs> the new jungle. I'm sorry. And Noah grows out his hair. Where's long left? All right, I've, I've done the bit already. We can't do it again. Oh, and to uh, add insult to injury, Lele makes the mature decision for once to break up with both of them. It was fun, right? 
Babe, what? It's over. No. Look, you don't have to break up with us. Just, just choose. I'm not gonna choose. Right now, you guys are fighting, but you'll get over it. I think I should just let you guys be together. Oh, oh, come on. We had an awesome time together. Let's just end it right now, like this. Then, in a shocking turn of events, Noah totally redeems his character by saying something truly thought-provoking and brave. <laughs> Alcohol bad. This thing sucks, by the way. It makes everything taste like metal. Wow. We have this generic breakup, sad montage scene that transitions us into the third act. Look, you know what I'm talking about. Person is exposed as a bad person slash liar. <laughs> Look, if Rango did it, every film ever is gonna do it. <laughs> Fuzi, having such a broken heart from the ordeal, actually dies. <laughs> okay, he doesn't die. He, he just picks up a drinking addiction and dies. <laughs> <laughs> Noah ends up talking to his other female friend, and they might have something going on. Fuzi, meanwhile, goes back to his boss to beg for his job back. Getting fired, it made me realize that I care about this job. Probably more than I was willing to admit. And when I put my mind to it, I'm good at what I do. I may not be a creative genius, but I know how to get people's attention. Yes, Fuzi. You definitely know how to get people's attention. I need to call my mom. Can I please use your phone? Thank you so much. Oh, the f man? Uh, I'm serious? <laughs> he manages to secure his job again. I assume from the boss taking pity on his low intelligence. <laughs> I wash my bone with Sibby. Although Fuzi still isn't happy being without Noah, he doesn't feel complete and has to bail out of the meeting. <laughs> These guys are staring at me like. Okay, um, I'll, I'll be right back. Only for Noah to come back last minute and completely clutch the pitch. The converse course is to be conquered not by an individual, but by a team of two. And only by combining those clues and working together can they find the treasure. The only way to find the pair of golden converse is to first be a pair of friends. By the way, if uh, anyone's interested, I'm selling my off-white Converse shoes for a reasonable price. From four grand to only three. What a bargain. All right, disclaimer, that's that's not actually me. It's a bit, because five of you will actually think that's me. I, Jesus. After the successful pitch, Noah has offered his job back, but doesn't take it, because we still need some level of conflict to get another 15 minutes of runtime. When walking home, Fuzi meets up with Noah to apologize. Look, we gotta find a way to get past this, okay? So, I have an idea, which is gonna sound a little crazy, but, but just go with me on this one. Yeah. I think we should punch each other in the face as many times as possible. That is, uh, that is not what I thought he was gonna say. Now, to the film's credit, I didn't actually think they were gonna go through with this. Okay, no, look, see, we're, we're, we're both oh, yeah. It's a false start. But they do, oh, and they shit. both die. Alright, no, not really. But the film wraps up incredibly quickly. Noah hooks up with his femoid friend Jess, who was clearly into him the whole time, but I guess he wanted a Venezuelan girl instead. She's from Venezuela. He opens up an art exhibition and finally made it with a self-fulfilling, wholesome 100 career. Aww. Aww. Also, just to tie up loose ends, Fuzi now has a girlfriend. And then Lele shows up. You know, for, for someone who's the front cover of all the promotional material, she appears about a third as much as Fuzi and Spider-Man stunt double. She says she's sorry, and that they can still be friends, and takes a picture of them together. Here's the deal. In the dating game, there are so many things that can go wrong. And in the next si- Oh, wait, that- That's the entire movie? That's it? The Sopranos didn't end as abruptly as that. What the fuck? We Love You isn't a bad movie. It's just really tame. Even I had a hard time trying to actually make anything here funny. The conflict is introduced and resolved way too late, not giving the characters enough breathing room to develop or change any stakes. However, I can compliment it by being nowhere near as raunchy or unfunny as Logan Paul's airplane mode. Black and full of cream. But by being so boring, it was almost harder to criticize. Also, there was no vitality. It's just a prank. So the movie lost points on that one. <laughs> I feel the only reason they put Lele on the front cover is because she's the most e-famous out of the whole group, despite having basically a cameo role. So in conclusion, who was the real winner of this movie? Was it Noah, Lele, or FuziTube? Of course it was FuziTube, because after this, his career blew up, starring in the hit horror comedy film, Boo, and Boo 2. It's gonna be super creepy and scary, that's why it's gonna be lit!
Thank you for watching. Consume product in description and and sub sub sub. <laughs>